There's a statement I often encounter which runs along the lines of this. A belief in science requires the same amount of faith as a belief in God. This statement is incorrect. While faith is certainly required to believe in God, science is geared towards removing reliance on faith. Science is the systematic acquisition and application of knowledge about the structure and behaviour of the physical universe, gained via empirical evidence through observation, measurement and experimentation. The definition of science is bound up with gathering observable, measurable evidence. It does not enlist faith. It's sometimes argued that because science hasn't yet uncovered all the answers, there are things that you have to take on faith, so science requires faith. This is making an error in reasoning. Science describes what happens. Any predictions it makes based on what's observed to happen are then supported, not supported, or contradicted by further experimentation and or observation. Science doesn't require you to take anything on faith. In the absence of valid reliable evidence, the default position is we don't yet know. Some people act astounded when scientists say they don't know all the answers. But why? No reputable scientist has ever claimed to know all the answers. Science isn't about trying to prove how clever you are, but it is about striving to determine what's really going on. I don't claim to know how the universe came to exist. You may say, well, I believe God made it. That's better than no answer. But you'd be wrong. An answer for which there's no reliable evidence is not better than no answer. I don't know is a wonderful answer. It's honest, accurate and requires no faith. There's no shame in admitting you don't know something. On the contrary, the only shame is in claiming you know when you don't or can't possibly know. Science doesn't yet have the answers to many questions we would like to know, but what it does have, unlike faith-based claims, is a rigorous, reliable and self-critical way of looking for answers. Some argue that science has its own faith-based assumptions. The consistency of physical laws is an observation and the technology you use every day demonstrates that this observation that science makes use of is substantially justified. If aeroplanes sometimes became invisible in mid-air, you might have a case for claiming that the consistency of physical laws is a faith-based assumption. The truth is, we take scientific technology for granted because of the overwhelming evidence that the physical laws behind it work consistently. Notice I'm not commenting on the goodness of technology. The morality of nuclear bombs, or for that matter mobile phones that play the rednecks Cotton Eye Joe, is a different discussion. What I'm pointing out is that the science behind the countless complicated and simple things that you use every day works. If you deny that, then ask yourself how you're watching this video. And those who think that the science responsible for developing their computers is different from the science that, for example, has established gravity and evolution as fact, have been misinformed and would do well to learn about what science really is before commenting on what they believe to be its shortcomings. What happens in science when existing concepts seem unable to account for observed discrepancies? Does science collapse? No. Scientists refine their ideas. Newton's equations, although still powerful enough to predict the position of the moon centuries in advance, were replaced by deeper Einsteinian physics, which have far greater predictive power for scenarios involving very strong gravity. Such paradigm shifts show that science isn't about dogmatically defending personal theories and the status quo. The advancement of knowledge depends on scientists being able to examine and challenge concepts, rather than regard them as sacred and unquestionable. Scientists are genuinely open-minded, receptive to new ideas that despite sometimes seeming counterintuitive, help to describe and predict the universe in which we live as accurately as possible. But because all candidate theories are subjected to the most rigorous scrutiny by the international scientific community, scepticism is built into the scientific method. In this way, scientists remain genuinely open-minded without the pitfalls of gullibility. Unlike science, we don't currently have anything that can be regarded as evidence for the existence of gods. Someone's feeling of personal certainty that a given god exists cannot be regarded as evidence that it exists. Just as the feeling of certainty among ancient Greeks that a god called Helios drove a sun chariot across the sky cannot be regarded as evidence that this took place. Books such as the Bible cannot be regarded as presenting evidence of prophecies, miracles or being the word of God because none of these claims can be validated by independent scientific investigation. By contrast, claims made in books on biology, astronomy, physics and evolution can be and have been examined and validated scientifically. The Bible remains true only for those who have faith in its truth. And faith is fine, it just carries no scientific weight or persuasive value for people who don't share that faith. To many of those who believe in a God and the divine nature of Jesus, their faith has superior status precisely because it's not evidence-based. I would argue that there's nothing intrinsically commendable in believing without evidence, since it leaves you much more open to accepting false claims. 
If, for example, the Guinness Book of Records accepted every claim submitted without requiring independently verifiable evidence, the book's credibility would plummet. However, I do appreciate the intellectual honesty of theists who acknowledge that it's faith, not evidence, on which they base their belief in a god. But certain theists, not content with looking after their own beliefs, seek to establish them as part of the only plausible and morally acceptable world view. And realising that faith is a rather weak position from which to try to do this, they attempt to downgrade science to something requiring just as much faith as theism. Suddenly, the belief in a god, lacking any independently testable evidence and shared only by some of us, is claimed to have equal status to the undeniable tidal wave of scientific technology and progress used and witnessed daily by us all. These people, who aren't content, as many more reasonable religious people are, to believe what they believe and let others do the same, must realise that before their claim of equal faith can be taken seriously, it must be backed up by evidence. Unfortunately, the claim collapses under even low-level examination, and there's even a passage in the Bible which illustrates why. It's the story of Doubting Thomas. After Jesus' crucifixion, it's written that Thomas, one of the twelve disciples, is told by the others that they've seen Jesus. He says he won't believe it unless he can touch the nail wounds in Jesus' hands and the wound in his side. Notice that not even seeing Jesus is enough for him. He's a real sceptic. He needs to touch the wounds. Eight days later, the disciples are together again, and this time Thomas is with them as Jesus appears. It's written that Jesus then lets Thomas touch his wounds, and Thomas exclaims, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus tells him, You believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. This story highlights the significance of the difference between accepting Jesus' divinity because of evidence and accepting it with none, indicating that less faith is needed when you have what science requires. Jesus praises those who accept without evidence, but it's interesting that the Bible has Thomas rejecting even his fellow disciples' testimony of Jesus' divine resurrection. Ultimately, in this story, he needs first-hand evidence. Why evidence of the kind purportedly required and granted to doubting Thomas isn't currently available for modern atheists remains unexplained. Even if it wasn't self-evidently untrue that science and theism require equal faith, one certainly can't make that claim and simultaneously claim faith as a badge of virtue that makes theists superior to the sceptical scientists. It's either one or the other. You either claim equal faith or claim faith makes you superior. You can't have both. You can't have your faith cake and eat it. As I've explained, I don't think either claim can be justified. I have no problem with other people having beliefs that aren't based on evidence. Some of my friends and family have beliefs in God, homeopathy, aura reading and astrology, none of which I share, and this doesn't stop us loving each other. But when someone's evidence-free belief boils into the demand that everyone else must accept that belief as the only one that's plausible or morally defensible, big problems arise. Imposing an evidence-free belief, such as a belief in God, upon an individual or group via education, law, government or any other institution is dismissive, unreasonable and uncivilised. Faith-based beliefs have no place in these institutions, and the people who hold such beliefs are, in my view, entitled to pursue them only in their own time and with their own resources. Misrepresenting science doesn't increase the status of their beliefs. It just creates the impression that they're unwilling or unable to engage in fair and honest discussion. If I believed there was a God, that would be enough for me. I wouldn't get tangled up with making insupportable claims to try and prove it logically to non-believers. If believing in a God isn't enough for you, if other people's non-belief leaves you feeling angry and you don't believe they have the right to live their lives as citizens worthy of equal respect, especially in education and law, I'd encourage you carefully to consider why you feel that way.